I know, I know. You wake up. It's a beautiful sunny day wherever you are. You grab your morning coffee. You look out the window in your robe or your boxers or whatever. And a bluebird floats on by and it's flapping its wings and whistling. And you're like, <laughs> it's going to be a good day. And then you pull up your phone or sit on your computer. And along comes Tim Pool with the new TimCast video where he's like, inflation is worse than we expected. But, but I know you wanted good news. It's not a 40-year high. All right. It's kind of special when the latest uh, consumer price index comes out and inflation is a little bit lower than the 40-year high, a little bit lower, but still worse than we expected. And I'm just like, could you guys have pretended it was going to be worse so we could pretend to be happy about 8.3% inflation? So Joe Biden comes out the other day and he's like, inflation's going to be bad. I know it's going to be really bad, but ultra MAGA, yo, I think this country has imploded a long time ago. 8.3% in April compared to last year, showing signs of leveling off. Ah, uh, it's good news. It remains near a 40 year high, but little change from one month ago could be a positive sign for the price of goods, services, and the broader economy. Yo, they're yanking your chain, man. I hate to be the bearer of bad news on this fine, sunny, uh, what is it, Wednesday morning? Is it Wednesday? I lost track of it is. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but with the latest news about shortages, fuel prices, yo, inflation is going to be massively bad next month. So, or I should say this month, right now, actually. So this is April's data. And they were expecting it to be 8.1%. And so when you look at the news from yesterday, they were like, it's going to be lower than it was at 8.5 in March. So that's good news. And then it turns out to be worse. It's kind of crazy. I feel like it's so bad that when it's 0.2% less than it was last month, even though it's almost a 40-year high, we all pretend like it's good news. We're in some dangerous territory, my friends. We are in some dangerous territory. Let me just go through everything where, where, where we're at right now. You guys know about the baby food shortages. Parents are stressed out over baby formula shortage and limits. It's insane. Yo, it is getting really, really crazy. But it's not just this. It's also cat food. Cat food. I mean, people have pets. Cat food. I, I love how it's like this eat this, not that website says there are shortages of these two grocery staples right now. And it's like, this is the millennial woman's nightmare. Cat food and baby food. I mean, if you are a conservative millennial woman, you're like, there's no formula. And if you're a liberal millennial woman, you're like, there's no cat food. It's not. That, what's up with that? Right? I don't know. Is that, is that, um, am I insulting millennial liberal women? Or do they actually have, I have a cat. I'm, <laughs> they're all cat ladies. Okay. Anyway, Republicans are trying to play it up like, they're upset about this, like inflation is bad, House Republicans. Yet Jack Posobiec points out they just sent $40 billion to Ukraine. So you know what, man? Spare me. It's bad. Diesel prices are at an all-time high. Let's go through all these stories and then we'll hit them one by one. Diesel prices at an all-time record high the other day. There's a diesel shortage coming next. So when they play these games and they say to you, don't worry, it's leveling off. They're whacking you over the head and telling you you're not being, well, what is, okay, fine. They're pissing on you and telling you it's raining. Like it's bad, but they're telling you it's not that. I mean, nobody wants to get rained on. You're like outside, you're getting wet, but worse still, they're pissing on you. I don't know. Is that family friendly? Probably not. I'll tell you what, my friends. I'm going to shout it out as I, as I periodically do, safeandreadymeals.com. This is a sponsored spot for this segment. Safeandreadymeals.com does help support the work we do and the show, and these are emergency food supply buckets. You know why that's cool? Because you can reuse the bucket. Head over to safeandreadymeals.com, and you can get your three-month emergency food supply or your four-week emergency food supply. And I'll tell you why I did. We got a bunch of this stuff. We have a lot of employees. Uh, so at, at the facility, we have, we have a decent amount, but we don't have three months of food. I, at least I don't believe so. Maybe, but probably not. People are always like, Tim, don't tell people you have food supplies. I'm like, yeah, we also have like 30 people in guns. So I'm not really worried about it. Here's why I think it's a good idea to pick up emergency food. One, sometimes it rains. There could be a, a, the river over here was flooded recently and it was crazy. They were going to shut down the bridges. Not like you wouldn't be able to get food if that was the case, but you'd have to go somewhere else. 
Sometimes there are floods. Sometimes there are storms. Sometimes the power goes out. And sometimes you might not be able to get food for a little bit. This stuff is a 25, up to a 25-year shelf life. You put it in your closet, you forget about it. One day something bad happens, you've run out of food, then you crack it open. You never crack these things open unless you absolutely have to. With the shortages and with inflation, I think it's, it's something you should consider. If it's right for you, I don't, I, I don't want to tell people to go and become you know, preppers and build underground bunkers, but you got a first aid kit. You should have some emergency water. And you should have some emergency food. In my opinion, I think it's a good idea. Considering the shortages that are, that are here, Chicken, they're, they're culling chickens by the millions. I think it's a good idea. The other thing I would say is this stuff lasts 25 years. So when I, when I have people, you know, when we have guests over and they're like, why would, I, why would you buy this? I'm like, you know, honestly, I don't know if I'll ever need emergency food in 25 years. Maybe something might come up. I think it's a, it, I think it's a good chance that we get a snowstorm and we get, you know, the roads shut down or something bad happens, I guess. But I was like, I got to be honest. First of all, the food's good. We, we, they've got like stroganoff and mac and cheese and just, it's just like you, you mix it with water and you heat it up. If it's, if, if inflation is hitting this bad and diesel, there's diesel shortages coming and diesel prices are through the roof. My attitude was like, if I buy this now, I have it for 25 years, a year from now, it's going to be more expensive and it's going to last 25. So I think it's like, it's almost like a food investment. But if, if you are watching this news and you're concerned about this stuff, safeandreadymeals.com. Special shout out because it is a sponsored spot from the show, but, you know, consider it. Just just make sure you can survive. That's what I always tell people. And I always, I'll always say this. Download an emergency survival guide onto your phone right now. Get a backup battery with solar chargers. The solar charging batteries, they don't, they, they don't work very quickly. But if you can turn your phone on and get access to a calculator, a calendar, and an emergency survival guide, you are going to be infinitely better off than the person who doesn't have access to these things. I do not believe that we're facing the apocalypse to that degree. Even if there is a major war, even if there's no fuel, I still think we're going to have access to electricity to a certain degree. I mean, California's had, you know, rolling brownouts and other problems. New York suffered these things with the hurricane. So I'll tell you what I got. We got these things called um, EcoFlow batteries. And they're these big batteries. We use them because we have in the studio, if the power goes out, we switch over to uh, backup battery power. But they also come with, if you order it, these big solar panels. And so we've actually set this up. And it actually is quite amazing. We bought a bunch of them. They can all link together. And you can charge up these things for, uh, in a matter of a couple hours. And here's the, here's the crazy part. We actually ran an air conditioner off of it for two hours when the power went out during a storm once during the show. I was like, it is boiling hot up here because we did the studio in the highest point of the building, which was a mistake. And then we got these emergency batteries. And I just think, you need to be able to have water, food, and a way to get power. Now, for most people who live in the middle of nowhere, not that hard to do. If you live in the city, you're in serious trouble if you don't have access to sunlight. Here's a story from NBC News. And then we'll go through, go through um, what they're not telling you. The inflation rate was little changed in April. A potential sign that the rapid growth in the cost of goods and services would soon taper off. May soon taper off. Yo, get out of here, dude. That is, that is insane. This, this Rob... You wrote this article. This is an opinion. This is what I don't understand about these articles. It is an opinion piece and they call it news. It, 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 a sign that the rapid growth of uh, cost of goods may soon taper off. May soon. That's your opinion about what I, I'm sorry. I just can't stand the news. I go on TimCast.com periodically and I'm looking at articles and I'm like, guys, put an opinion tag on this. And then they have to argue with me why it's not an opinion. And I'm like, OK, fine. Fair point. We had one article about what could happen uh, with Roe v. Wade being overturned. And I said, opinion tag. And they were like, wait, wait. These are actual trigger laws in effect. And I went, oh, OK, fine. But guys, opinion article. Consumer prices rose 0.3% in April after rising 1.2% in March. According to data released by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics on Wednesday in April, the inflation rate grew 8.3% compared to a year ago. The number in March was 85 the numbers indicate that inflation, which has been sitting at a 40 year high since December, is showing signs of cooling off. I just want I, I just. I, I, what are you thinking when you write this showing signs of cooling off may soon taper off as an opinion for sure. I think it's showing signs that um, it is always darkest before the. Uh, our, oh, no, no, was it? We're in the eye of the storm. There you go. We're in, it's the it's the calm before the storm. Take a look at this. All right, Joe Biden, let's hear what you have to say about this. 
We haven't had enough truckers, for example, to deliver the lumber. Oh, we haven't, we haven't had enough truckers. Why, why haven't we had enough truckers, Joe Biden? Could it be that diesel prices just hit a new record high? Here's why a diesel shortage may be next. Could it be that diesel is up to six bucks a gallon and some of these tankers are going to spend thousands of dollars to refuel and these uh, uh, tankers, sorry, these semi trucks, these truckers only get like eight miles per gallon. And, 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 and you're, you're talking almost a dollar per mile. Yo, this is insane. From AG Web, Ag Web. Farmers are already faced with shortages of equipment, parts, tires, and some crop inputs. Now, due to increased demand and a drop in production, diesel shortage may be next. The largest diesel distribution hub in the U.S. is sitting on supplies at a 30-year low. So when they come out and tell you inflation is showing signs of cooling off, it's like, dude, did you even Google search what's happening to the economy? This is what I can't understand. Journalists don't know how to use Google because this is what I do. I'm like uh, inflation de- 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 on my keyboard. And then it's like inflation is bad, but showing signs of cooling off. And then I'm like, OK, well, let's talk about inflation from the bigger picture. And then I'm like, gas prices are high. Wouldn't that result in an increased inflation next month or this month? Right now, right now, they're saying it's going to cool off. The April numbers are 8.3 percent. And they're saying it's going to cool off. Yet in May, right now, mid-May, the beginning of mid-May, diesel prices are at a record high. Gas prices are at a record high. Wouldn't that mean a cost of all goods are going to go up? Did you not even consider this, good sir, over at NBC News? Or are you lying? Here's what happens. You get these people who will say things to you like, it's going to get better. It's improving because they want confidence. They want consumer confidence because consumer confidence is good. They then say to people like me, Tim, you shouldn't tell people things are going to get bad because then they'll panic and it'll make things get worse because consumer confidence will drop. And I'm like, maybe I'm not here to predict the future or dictate what the future should be. I'm just here to tell people what's happening right now. And there is a real conundrum newsrooms face when they're like, guys, if we report this economic data, it will make it worse for people. And then they say we should withhold the information or lie for the sake of protecting the economy. My attitude is I'm just going to say it and tell you and hope that you're responsible enough to take care of yourself, your friends and your family and your community to survive something like this. Now, I don't think the apocalypse is here. I don't think everyone's going to die. I do think people may tighten their belts. I do believe some morbidly obese homeless people might be just homeless people after a little while. I do think the U.S. has problems. But if not, if, if they're saying not only do we have record high diesel prices, but we are also looking at a shortage of it, not only will the prices skyrocket due to the cost of fuel, but the inability to transport this food is going to result in prices skyrocketing further. You will eventually find two people fighting over the last can of beans in a Walmart parking lot, or in this case, baby formula, because baby formula is much more serious. Yo, an adult can go almost a month, I think, without food. You got to have water. They can, go, they, can, they can go a month slowly withering away and dying. But their babies, you know, if you have kids, what you'd be willing to do for your kid. Now, we made the joke on IRL, like what happened to breastfeeding? And I do think there's a fair point to stress. We didn't used to have baby formula. Women used to nurse their babies and had to figure out ways to feed their kids without corporate Nestle baby formula. I can't remember who it was when on the show, but they were like, what did we do for babies before Nestle was incorporated? It was a funny point. But there are many women who can't breastfeed, currently not lactating and can't just start. And so baby formula was created for a reason. It improved the rate at which we were feeding our babies. So yes, I understand. It is really scary. That's what it says. This is really scary. There's no baby formula, or at least the preferred brands people are looking for. They're just not available. I would say take what you can get now. You know, I know there's a shortage, but I think what we're looking at is you're going to see a dad or a mom. People are going to be fighting in these grocery stores for baby formula. And it's not just that, too. I don't know if anybody's going to be fighting over cat food because uh, let's be honest, cats can eat meat. You know, uh, Mr. Bocus, who's our cat, we call him. his, His name's actually Bucko, but for a variety of reasons, his name has morphed into now Mr. Bocus. Uh, he can eat, he can eat meat, you know, so we have farm beef and we have salmon and, you know, cats need taurine and stuff like that. 
I don't think anybody's going to be getting into a fight over cat food. But I do think it's funny that millennial women are being hit the hardest by this. As I mentioned before, conservative women concerned about their babies and liberal women concerned about their cats. I know I'm kidding. Conservative women have cats too and liberal women have babies as well. But I think we're getting to the point where outside of the cat food thing, the baby food thing should be the most alarming. Because if there was ever any product that would result in someone fighting in a parking lot over a shortage, it's going to be baby food. Like I was mentioning, you'll get some dad, you'll get some guy, and he'll walk in and be like, there's no beans left. All right. And then he walks out and he sees a guy holding a bunch of beans and he's like, "Ah, whatever, man. Now, if he's starving and it's been a couple weeks, he might fight for those beans. But what if it's been a few days and his baby hasn't had formula? Then you might see people fight over formula. In China, we're already seeing it. So if fuel prices are through the roof, fuel shortages are coming. Yo, you know what, dude? Don't buy the emergency food. I don't know. You got to do right by you. Maybe you, maybe it's too expensive. It is. I mean, a three-month supply costs money. And the one-month supply even costs money. But I'll just say this. You need food more than you need luxuries. You need food more than you need movies. You need food more than you need video games. And my biggest fear with the emergency food stuff is that it's going to get more expensive. Fuel shortages for shipping will make it more expensive. Shipping costs alone are going to be expensive. Then you've got the distribution of the products to the company that makes the buckets. It's going to go up. Inflation is going to go up. And I'm just like, I bought a whole bunch in the past month. You know, again, I'm not, I'm not filling up a bunker preparing for the apocalypse. All right. I bought some of this stuff because I'm like, I can, it's not, you know, we have the, we have the means to do it. So I know maybe some of you just can't like, I can't afford it. I get it. I get it. I'm just saying, take, take care you go to the grocery store. I always say, don't panic buy. Don't buy up 30 years worth of beans. That's kind of ridiculous. But some of these, you know, get some canned goods that are going to last you a couple of years because you never know. And um, keep your stock in rotation, your your pantry. So you want to put the newest stuff you buy in the back and then eat stuff in the front. And just, just be prepared because I think things are going to get bad. Now, we are a very well-fed country. We have, we have as I mentioned, morbidly obese homeless people. So I don't think that we are going to starve to death, but I do think things will get harder for a lot of people. Now, the House Republicans have tweeted out that um, it's not just the 8.3%. That's across the board. Let's take a look at meat and eggs. 14%. Electricity is up 11. Food at home, 10.8. Food away from home, 7.2. Gasoline, 43.6. It's kind of crazy when you look at the breakdown of these numbers skyrocketing. Someone uh, on IRL was telling us that it was good in a sense that Republicans lost Georgia because now it's un- it's, there's, there's no ambiguity. The Democrats are leading the charge on this and things are getting worse. If the Republicans had some power, then everyone would be confused and, oh, I'm blaming somebody. But Jack Posobiec points out 70% of House Republicans voted to send $40 billion to Ukraine last night. Q the fire Elmo GIF. You know that one where Elmo's like, ah, and the fires are rising up behind you? For what reason? Did anyone think it was a good idea to give away $40 billion when our economy is in shambles, supply chain is crumbling, inflation is through the roof, and we are going to make inflation worse to defend a country that is not an EU nation, that is not a NATO ally? (laughs) We've lost our minds. I think there's going to be a revolt. I think there's going to be a a, a political revolt. I think we're going to see a red wave, but I think we're going to see, I mean, what Trump, most of the people Trump endorsed have won. I think just the other day, one of his candidates didn't win. Yo, this, it's going to be, it's going to be lit in Congress. We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? I don't see how Democrats can pull out of this one. You know, they talk about Roe v. Wade and the Democrats will desperately try to make the midterm issue about Roe v. Wade. But dude, when you have no baby food or cat food, I think people are going to be like, I don't know about this Roe v. Wade thing, but I'm hungry. And you're going to I think dudes, for the most part, you're not going to win on the abortion argument. These women are are like posting things on on Reddit where they're saying no more dating apps and no more sex until men vote right. And I'm like, dude, all the guys that would want to hook up with you have already agreed with you on this issue. So you choosing abstinence is exactly what the conservatives were asking for. So I don't think that you've got, look, here's what's going to happen. I don't think millennial men are going to be like, I better vote Democrat or else I'm not going to get a date. 
I think millennial men are going to be like, what was that about? I don't know. I want a steak and I can't get one. Certain things uh, have, have a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy of needs. And procreation and dating, while, while uh, uh, pair bonding and copulation are essentials for human beings, when a person is starving to death, they actually put survival above procreation. I mean, well, I'm presuming that. I mean, maybe it's not true. But here's what I mean. If someone's starving to death, I don't think they're going to be like, well, I might die, but I'm going to prioritize getting laid. If like there's a meteor, a comet heading towards Earth, ready to slam into it and just vaporize everybody, perhaps. But if you're like, I haven't eaten in a week, I'm going to try and figure out how to eat. You're not going to be like, I'm going to stop eating and try and find a date. So I think even millennial men and women may put Roe v. Wade on the back burner when they're like, I have no food. Especially millennial women with kids. They're going to be like, well, I certainly think choice is the right option. My baby needs food. Yo. This is where we're headed. Biden wanted $33 billion for Ukraine. Congress gave him $40 billion. It's not just Biden's fault. It's Congress. Republicans are trash and Democrats are trash. And here we go. What's it? Uh, Strauss Howe generational theory. The fourth turning. Things are starting to ramp up, baby. I don't know if you want to get emergency supplies or prepare for the worst, but here's what I'd say. If you can... Not just emergency food. Get one of those emergency solar packs. What's um? We 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 had a sponsor spot before. This is not a sponsor spot, by the way. But for Preppers Peak, was uh they sponsored IRL a couple times, and they had these these ba backup batteries you can charge your phones off of, with solar panels built in. It does take a long time to charge through solar power to generate that current, but I think it's worth it. I mean, if you can charge your phone up even three percent, and it takes you like three or four minutes. I don't know how long it takes. Then you can open your phone and you can get access to a survival kit, or emergency survival guide. And rest assured, man, having access to that information will save your life. These survival guides I've done a little bunch. They'll be like, don't eat this seed. Don't eat that seed. Don't eat this berry. Here's a leaf you can't eat. You can eat tree leaves. I think people don't realize that you watch a deer that you're like, maybe I can eat it. I wouldn't recommend eating anything unless you check to make sure. But like we have chives all over the backyard. We threw them in our meat, grilled them up, makes them delicious. You know, we'll eat what we can get. Also, I just think, you know, foraging is actually kind of fun. We have wine berry season up here in the uh, Appalachian Mountains. They're like red berries and they're everywhere and they are amazing. They're just, so we just, we pluck them all. We get big bowls. We made wine berry ice cream. That was awesome. And then we have pawpaw. Yo, pawpaw is like an avocado mango thing, banana-ish. And it rains these things here. I remember watching them grow and there's like one tree and I'm looking and they're not growing and I'm like, come on, man. You know, pawpaw are supposedly hard to cultivate because like you need beetles and flies to pollinate the plants, the flowers. So weird. And then I was just like, man, this is it's it's like we're only going to have three. I really was excited for pawpaw. And then end of September, beginning of October, it was they were hitting you in the head. They were just falling and there were thousands everywhere. And we had big bowls and they spoiled. I'm like, we got too much. Pawpaw season's cool, but you really only have a certain amount of time to eat them. But it is really cool getting your own food and going out in the forest. Something I didn't know about when I lived in a city. For all of you who actually live in rural areas, you're laughing all the time. I see the comments where they're like, oh, it's just, you know, Tim just discovering these basic aspects of life. It was really cool when we grew our own food. I'd walk out in the garden and grab a zucchini, massive, chop it up, throw in my omelet. Take the, uh, we, it, it really is a magical moment. If you are a city person, the first time you get eggs from your own chicken coop, throw in your own vegetables and fresh basil and tomatoes and have food that came out of your garden. It's amazing. I think that's what we need. I think, you know, a lot of people on the left have been like, why don't we put fruit trees all over the city? And then I'm like, because then the fruit falls off rots and then there's rotten food and flies everywhere. How about you have a garden, which you can do in your, if you have a lawn, in your, if, you're in the, if, you're in the, if you're outside of downtown areas. You can do it. You should do it. Be more responsible. I think most people who watch this have already gotten the message. It was a year ago I was talking about looming food shortages, and apparently the Biden administration didn't do anything about it, didn't prepare for it. Not only did we know food shortages were coming because of the hiccup in the supply chain, but the, 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 they knew that the war was coming in Ukraine. They had intelligence suggesting it. I doubted them, but at the very least I can say this. I was wrong. Sorry, guys. I didn't think we were going to see war. They did. They didn't prepare for the food crisis. 
Yo, Biden's nuts. I'll leave it there. Next segment is coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.